Good morning. Happy New Year. I think it's wonderful that we start the new year off worshiping our God, and it's a great way to start the new year. I want to share with you, I, which I think is some good, solid advice for making the new year better this morning. And I think in the new year, we need to be careful. We also need to be thoughtful and we need to be thankful. I read a story about a guy whose name was Pete and he was at a New Year's Eve party. He turns to his friend Ken and he asked for a cigarette. He said, I thought you made a New Year's resolution to quit smoking. Well, Pete said, I'm in the process of quitting. And he did that with kind of a grin on his face, but he said, right now, I'm in the middle of phase one. Ken replied, phase one? Yeah, laughed Pete. He said, I've quit buying. You know, the top 10 resolutions as I was looking on Mr. Google, which you know, they have all of the answers. He said to spend some time with family and friends, fit and fitness. You know, they take care of your health and exercise. Tame the bulge. Oh, the internet tells me that over 66% of adult Americans are considered overweight, of which I am one. Number four is to quit smoking. On an average, smokers try about four times before they quit for good. Enjoy life more, that sounds good. Quit drinking, well, that's not a problem for me. Get out of debt. You, don't want, you won't do it in a year. It will take uh, some planning and some saying no to yourself and to others. Number eight is to learn something new. And my answer to that was why? I've got enough to do without taking on something else. Number nine, help others. How quaint, that's, a thing, that's thinking of someone else for a change instead of ourselves. Number 10, get organized. Some might say I have, I've never have, and so why start now? I actually wrote a preacher in the middle of the week and I asked him what he was going to speak about on this Sunday. And I did that because I was struggling a little bit on having a New Year's sermon. And he wrote back and he said that, that he didn't know. He said, I don't know. He said that he had to wait for the mood to strike him. Well, you know, to me that's poor planning and I've heard it said that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. But I want to ask you a question. Did you notice that these top 10 resolution had nothing to do, had absolutely nothing to do with spiritual improvement or that God was not included? That's the way it is with many people. They don't include God or Christ in the picture of their lives. Let me suggest to you that the Lord should be included in every aspect of our lives marriage, family, children, work, play, pleasure. I could go on and on. Do you, any of you ever watch the television show Dancing with the Stars? At one time, Donny Osmond, we declared the new champion of Dancing with the Stars, taking home that show's uh, trophy uh, in the final contest on the ABC reality program. Osmond, the former teen pop star of the singing Osmond family, said the show has been a bright spot in a career of ups and downs in his life. I did it, screamed Osmond. He exclaimed and he was so excited. He promptly rushed into the audience and plucked out his wife, Debbie, whom he carried across the stage. But there is something bigger and better, brethren, and that's being a winner in the eyes of God in the new year. 
Here's some good solid advice for making the you you better. Be careful, be thoughtful, and be thankful. Number one that we look at in the new year is be careful. If you would, turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> we'll begin in verses 15 through 17. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. It says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Be careful in living. Be careful in the way you live. Be careful. Be wise. Be careful with your time, which actually, if you think about it, it's God's time. Don't contribute to evil. Be wise. Seek the Lord's will in all things every day and in every way. There is a gentleman by the name of Steve Rose who actually does a catalog each month and each week of self-induced injuries. And it reads something like uh, it was out of the Spanish Inquisition handbook. It talks about fractured skull, torn rotator cuff, shattered fingers, broken wrist, fractured elbows, torn muscles, sulfuric acid burns, self-stabbings, multiple broken noses, and as of last month, a ruptured tendon in his ankle. I didn't trip on anything, says the 46-year-old patient attorney from Wisconsin. I was just walking down the hall in a hurry. And I went around a corner, and it suddenly felt like somebody hit me in the ankle with a baseball bat. Hurry, worry, multitasking, stress. You might call them the four horsemen of the accident prone. Stress is such a huge factor when it comes to accidents. In fact, it was recently linked to an increase in post-9-11 traffic fatalities by researchers at the University of Minnesota. Brothers and sisters, we're all vulnerable when it comes to accidents, but obviously some are more prone than others. Hurry, worry, multitasking, and stresses lead to accidents. And I could go on with that list. The same, though, is true in the spiritual realm. If we're not properly focused in life, we will suffer for it. And most of the time, we are far too worldly or materially focused than we are spiritually focused. Let me be honest about this. We're not as spiritual minded as we should be. We are far more earthly or worldly minded. Colossians chapter three, verses one through four, tells us what we should be doing and or focusing on. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. I'm sure that many of you in here are very familiar with the Toyota car manufacturing company. You may remember back in November 25th of 2009, Toyota Motor Corporation said it will replace accelerator pedals and only and own about 4 million recalled vehicles in the United States because the pedals can get stuck in the floor mats. Another blow to the reputation of the world's largest automaker. I had a good friend who managed our Memphis, Tennessee facility for Brentag, whose wife was coming home uh, from helping her daughter buy a wedding dress. And the pedal was stuck on her Toyota. It killed their daughter. And she is still in a wheelchair to this day. But perhaps we all 
you and I, we need a recall in regard to our lives because we don't always function properly. Sometimes we even get out of hand and do crazy things. And no matter how good we are, sometimes we just mess up. We need to be more careful and use our time more wisely for Christ. Someone said, and this was a story I read, someone said on my way to deliver a computer to a customer, I saw a handwritten sign at the entrance of an alley and it read, block, do not pass. Difficult to turn back. I continued anyway, the man said, only to discover that the alley was indeed blocked by a fallen tree. As predicted, it took a while to turn the truck around. When I finally got back to the entrance, I noticed a second sign and it read, told you so. Brothers and sisters, God has told us so many times in life, but it seems that we don't listen too well. True or not? True for some, anyway. Some people just keep right on doing the same old things when they know that they are not right. And someday it will catch up to them. And God will do worse than block the road or put a sign that reads, told you so. Brethren, be careful in the way you live. Use your time for the Lord. Seek the Lord in life. And save the Lord. Serve the Lord no matter else, whatever else you do. Number two, in the new year, be thoughtful. In verse 18, it says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to democracy. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. That word, democracy, and I'm probably not saying it correctly, it literally means to do things evil, mostly of a illicit sexual matter. Be thoughtful of others. That's always good advice. But here we are to be thoughtful of God's Spirit who lives within us. I looked at another illustration from an unknown source. It, it was an article on how to be miserable. It says, think about yourself. Talk about yourself and use I as often as possible. Mirror yourself continually in the opinion of others. Listen greedy, greedily to what people say about you. Expect to be appreciated. Be suspicious. Be jealous and envious. Be sensitive to slights. Never forgive a criticism. Trust nobody but yourself. Insist on consideration and respect. Demand agreement with your own views on everything. Sulk if people are not grateful to you for favor shown them. Never forget a service you have rendered. Shirk your duties if you can. Do as little as possible for others. Are we guilty? Are we guilty of that? At times we are. We all like to be appreciated for the good things that we do. However, we can get caught up in ourselves if we're not careful. We can, be, we can become too self-focused and forget about others. When Roy Delamonte was chaplain at Payne College in Georgia, he preached the shortest sermon in the college's history. However, he had an extremely long topic. The topic of his sermon, and I quote, what does Christ answer when we ask, Lord, what's in religion for me? The complete content of his sermon was in one word. The complete content of his sermon was in one word. To the answer to that question, what does religion mean to me? The one word was nothing. He later explained that the one word sermon was meant for people brought up in the gimme, gimme gospel. 
When asked how long it took him to prepare the message, he said, 20 years. Many people are only interested in what they can get. Not what they owe the Lord or not what they can give to others. I am reminded of several key scriptures which should help to guide our thinking and our lives. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31 so whether you, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. These two commandments are the greatest. If we love God first of all and then love our fellow human beings, we won't go wrong. Again, verse 18, chapter 5 of Ephesians, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Instead of being self-centered, we should be Spirit-centered. We should think more of Him than we do about ourselves. Be more spiritual-minded than worldly or fleshly-minded. If we'll sit on our minds on spirit, on scripture, prayer, praising, and serving, we will have a better new year. And thirdly, in the new year, be thankful. Chapter 5, verses 19 through 20. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be thankful in Christ. Living a grateful life will keep you on the straight and narrow. People who are not aware of the blessings, people who are not aware of their blessings are not thankful. Instead, they're always, always looking for more. People who are not aware of their blessings are not thankful, and they're always looking for more. In another study that I looked at, nearly 70% question in an Associated Press poll said people are ruder than they were 20 or 30 years ago. Peggy Newfield, who is the founder and president of Personal Best, said the generation that came of age in the times of change in 1960s and 1970s <coughs> excuse me are now parents some grandparents who don't stress the importance of manners such as opening a door for a female a whopping 93 percent in an ap poll faulted parents for failing to teach their children well I think there's a question here, or at least I had to ask myself when preparing this, are you rude? Am I rude? I hope not. Are you quick to be polite in actions and speech? Sometimes I find myself forgetting to say thank you to someone for something they did, and then later I whip myself for it. <laughs> Shame on me for being forgetful and unpolite. What about being rude to God? Have you ever thought about that? What about being rude to God? Would you even ever consider that? Would we ever? 
when we fail to express our proper thanks and gratitude, it's being rude. And to him, we owe our greatest thanks and praise. <laughs> a five-year-old said grace at the family dinner one night. And he said this, Dear God, thank you for these pancakes. When he concluded, the parents asked him why he thanked God for the pancakes when they were having chicken. He smiled and said, I thought I'd see if he was paying attention. I believe that God pays very good and close attention to us when we pray. And I also think he does when we don't pray. When we praise him and when we don't. Psalms 103, verses 1 through 3 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. O my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Dr. Dale Robbins wrote, and he said, I used to think people complained because they had a lot of problems. But I have come to realize that they have problems because they complain. Complaining doesn't change anything or make the situation better. It amplifies and frustrates, spreads discontent and discord, and can even invoke an invitation for the devil to cause havoc with our lives. Complaining makes us miserable. Psalms chapter 77 in the latter portion of Verse 3 says, I complained, and my spirit was overwhelmed. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. A positive, thankful person is a great witness in this dark world. We only shine, brethren, when we are thankful. Our light shines for the Lord when we are thankful, when we live it and we express it. I'd much rather hear someone saying things like bless the Lord or thank you, Lord, or praise the Lord than complain. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I am convinced, brethren, that a grateful person, a thankful person will live a better life and will be blessed with a better life. Do you want a better life in the new year? Be polite to God. Be quick to praise Him and thank Him for every little blessing you receive. In conclusion, someone said last year when I that I called my parents to wish them a happy new year. My dad answered the phone, this gentleman said. He said, well, dad, what's your new year's resolution? I asked him. And his dad replied this, to make your mother as happy as I can all year. He answered and he answered it proudly. Then he asked his mom, and ask her what her New Year's resolution was. And the mom replied to see that your dad keeps his resolution. God would certainly like to see us keep his resolutions, brethren. He knows that that's the way to be blessed. Walking with the Lord, doing things his way is the way to be blessed. Do you want a better life in the new year? Be careful. Be thoughtful. Be thankful. Is that truly what you want? Do you really want a good life in 2023? You know, it's, it's amazing. With all of the things that we have going on in our world today, there, there is a lot of speculation going on. People become worried and they're fearful. We have no reason to be fearful. And 2023 can be whatever we make it but there's one thing for sure if you read the scripture christ came to save us to give us salvation to give us an abundant life but do you know that's our choice 
That's our choice whether we choose to accept it or to reject it. But again, 2023 is going to be what we make it. We don't have to worry about all of the things that are going on in the world. Yes, they may affect us. But God loves us. And he will take care of us. He talks about that he takes care of the birds. He feeds them. What makes us think that he won't provide clothing and food for us? We live according to his commandments. We have nothing to fear. But you know, the only way to do that is to be one of his children to confess his name, to be buried in baptism for the remission of sins, and then strive to live a Christian life, to be thoughtful, to be thankful, and live the very best that you can. It's also sad to think about if you've done that and you've chosen to walk in the way of the world. It's hard not to do. We're more worldly minded than we are spiritually minded. But remember from whom our blessings come. And if you're in that situation, you turn back into the world, come and ask him for his forgiveness. Let us pray with you and for you. If you have need of the gospel invitation, won't you think about the things we've studied? If you have need of that invitation, come while we stand and sing.